Welcome back to another episode of the Arc Switch Survival Guide. Today we are going to teach you how to make an electric system in your base, starting with how to build a generator, how to make electric wiring, and then how to make an electric outlet. We're also going to show you how to hook up electrical appliances to your electric grid, and we're going to make a refrigerator and teach you how to use a refrigerator on ARC to keep food from spoiling, which will be incredibly helpful throughout the rest of our journey. And this is going to let us stockpile tons of prime meat, which will make it really easy to tame a really good high-level carnivores. So the first thing we need to do is actually unlock all of the engrams for the electric grid. Now we are first of all going to make an electric generator which converts gasoline into electricity to create the power we're going to use in the electric system. We also need electric cables to carry the electricity throughout the base, an electric outlet to actually plug in the appliances. So we're going to start with the electric generator straight electric cable, electric outlet, and we're actually going to skip the incline and vertical, and then we'll learn the electric cable intersection. And once we've got all of those learned, which you need to be level 49 to get those, we can actually get started. So the reason we taught you how to make a fabricator first is you actually craft all of these in the fabricator. And we taught you how to make gasoline because you actually craft gasoline in order to run the generator. And then at level 60, which takes a while, you can actually learn the engram to make a refrigerator. And the reason I'm learning that first off is because it takes polymer to make a refrigerator. And we happen to have a bunch of organic polymer which we're going to use as a substitute for regular polymer. And that means we no longer have to go all the way down to the mountains to get obsidian. We're just going to use this organic polymer we picked up from all of the Hesperornis that we killed on the way over here. So we've got almost all the ingredients we need. We'll just drop those into the fabricator. And then we're going to grab some more metal in order to actually make that refrigerator. Now once again I place the fabricator close enough to the forge that I can stand between the two and move hundreds of metal. So we're going to open up the folder for the electric system and there's electrical and electric and that depends on whether it's appliances or the actual electric grid itself. So we're going to check out this uh, refrigerator here and it looks like we need a little bit more electronics in order to make that. And we made some electronics on the episode where we showed you how to make a fabricator but we need a little bit more and we've got some pearls left over. So I'm going to come up here to the composites and go ahead and turn on that fabricator and then we'll just craft a few more electronics, which will be enough to actually craft that refrigerator. So we'll go back to structures and then electric, not electrical, for the actual electric appliances. And now we have all the materials we need to craft that refrigerator. So we'll go ahead and make that. And you get a really big experience boost from making a lot of these electrical items. So it's a good way to level up pretty fast. So I needed some more pearls in order to make the rest of this electric system, so I went on an expedition to raid some beaver dams, and we'll skip ahead past that to when I just got back from that expedition, but we'll show you that in the next episode. It's a pretty cool trick. You can get tons of pearls. And as you can see, I came back with a whole bunch more organic polymer and a lot of pearls and cementing paste. So the next thing we're going to do is actually build the electric system. So we made the refrigerator first just to make sure that the organic polymer that we were using as a substitute for regular polymer would not go bad on us, but turns out we've got more than enough. So I'm going to fire this back up and make a bunch more electronics using all of the pearls that we picked up because we do need quite a lot of electronics to make this electric system. And that's why I've been showing you a bunch of different tricks for how to get silica pearls. And uh, we'll show you another one in the next episode. But Hopefully at least some of these tricks will work well for you for gathering silica pearls and that'll give you a pretty good supply by the time you need to actually use them to make an electric system. So it looks like I'm going to need a little bit more wood so I'll go ahead and grab that 
and we'll drop that into the fabricator. And we'll come back up to the structures and electric. And here we go, we've got enough supplies to actually make that generator. So we'll go ahead and craft the generator. Uses up quite a lot of pearls to make that, but we've got plenty to spare. And I'm also going to make a connector, which is really nice because it allows you to split the cable itself into multiple different directions. I also need one electric outlet, which will plug in anything within about a 10 foot radius of it. And I'll make a couple of these electric cables, which are just gonna give us a straight extension from the generator. Hey, we killed an over after, that's nice. I always love taking those little guys out because they're so annoying. Okay, so let's grab all of this in our inventory here. And that should be enough since this is a very small base since it's built on a raft. And uh, if you've got a big base, you can use just one generator and make a really long cable to stretch all the way across your base. And you can pretty much power the entire thing with just one generator. So let's start by dropping the generator here. And I'm gonna place it where I can access it easily. But you can see how it's facing towards me. It's got those little uh, places that look kind of like tubes going down, and it's got that little box in the front. That is where the actual electric cable is going to attach to it. So it's going to attach facing towards me. So there we go. We've got this big electric generator, and it's actually sticking through the roof since this is only one story high. And the next thing I'm going to do is actually put this uh, splitting cable here, and that basically gives it a connector, and you can barely see it sticking up through the ceiling there. And it lets it have an intersection where it can go right, left, backwards, and forwards. So I could actually attach cables going in any direction from that. Now I'm going to check the roof and just make sure it's not blocking anything, but that looks totally fine. It sticks through just a little bit, but it should be just fine there. So I'll head back on inside, and we're going to go ahead and continue that electric cable system. So we've got this plugged in, and I'm just always picking up poop because it's really handy to have more of that stuff. And I'm going to need some gasoline in order to actually power that. So I'll put just a little gas in the fabricator because we don't use that very much. And I'll use most of the gasoline in the actual electric generator. So we'll drop all the gas in there. And now we've got the fuel that we need. And when we turn it on, it actually starts producing electricity. So you can see that lights up. You've got all these lights are now turned on. And if you look at this cable intersection right here, it's yellow where it used to be more of a gray color. And we can actually attach some straight cables to that. And once again, you can barely see that that's sticking out there. But it's as long as you've got the generator on, it should show up yellow instead of gray, which is actually really handy because as long as you've got the generator turned on, you can actually tell if the power is properly flowing through that. So I highly recommend turning your generator on before you start extending your cables. Now, once we've got the cable in place, we can attach an electric outlet at the end of it. And you'll see that's all sparky and has a little like blue glow on top of it. And that spark means it's actually getting power to it. But as long as it's attached to a, ca a cable that's glowing yellow, it should be in good shape. And there you can see it's turned off, and it's just kind of a dull gray. So there we go. We've got that, and it's got power. And now we actually need to plug in the refrigerator. Now, it will automatically plug in if you place the refrigerator within about 10 feet or maybe two or three actual foundation tiles of that electric outlet. And I'm going to try to place this kind of underneath this little ladder area. And that should allow me to put it there where it won't really be in the way. And you can see it just attaches a cable there, but that's going to keep me from actually climbing up the ladder. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up that refrigerator. Now, once again, you probably don't have that mod applied to your base game yet, but it should be coming to switch in due time. 
So I'm going to reposition this next to the ladder so it doesn't get in the way. And as you can see, it actually drops a cable right there, and it's plugged in. You always want to make sure it's got that cable attached. And uh, there you can see it a little better now. And the cable goes all the way up to the electric outlet. And the refrigerator has these green lights on the front and back of it, which allow you to see that it's actually turned on. So you want to always make sure you can see those green lights down there. And that'll let you know that your uh, power is actually running. And if you run out of gas, those lights will turn off. So always check that when you come into your base, because as soon as the electric generator stops running, then all of your food starts spoiling again at its normal rate. So you can see here the spoil time for this meat is two minutes, but when we put it in the refrigerator, it's over three hours. And the reason for that is the refrigerator multiplies its spoil time by 100 times. So it takes 100 times as long for that meat to spoil. Now I'm going to show you a quick clip into the future after I have harvested a ton of prime meat. And as you can see, I've got a whole inventory full of this prime meat that I used our handy little seagull trick to gather using dodos and listrosaurs. But the spoil time on this becomes hours where it used to be just two minutes maximum for prime meat to spoil. So now we can stockpile enough prime meat to tame a really high level carnivore and get really high taming effectiveness and tame it very quickly. So that's going to be incredibly helpful throughout the rest of our game and it'll let us tame things we would not have a chance to tame otherwise. So I hope this episode was helpful and taught you how to make your own electric system on ARC and how to make a refrigerator on ARC which will make your game so much easier. If this was helpful be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We just broke a thousand subscribers and thank you so much for all of your support. My wife and I are working on a co-op ARC video as a celebration for a thousand subscribers and we are going to have another contest to see if we can reach 1,100 and we will be sure to do another fun video as a celebration for that. So be sure to subscribe if you have not yet already, and we'll see you in the next episode. Thanks so much for watching this video from the ARC Survival Guide. If you enjoyed it or found it helpful, please like this video and subscribe to our channel so we can bring you more great guides like this one. ARC is an amazing game, but there is so much to learn before you can really enjoy it. We are dedicated to bringing you high quality guides, tutorials, and let's play videos that are fun, helpful, clean, and suitable for the entire family. There is a tutorial in this series for everything we have done so far in this video. Check out these playlists for more episodes from this series and other guides to help you enjoy your journey on ARC.